everyone, this is the Agent Ducky back here and today we are doing another flagship phone review. This time I've got the new iPhone 12, it just came out a few days ago and I'm super excited to actually unbox this thing. Now personally I have never been a fan of Apple so I want to see how much they can push me over from Android and Samsung to the iOS side, both are complete enemies and how much they can influence me, persuade me to come over to their side. Um, and I'll just tell you at the end what I think of the phone, so um, let's get unboxing. Okay, we've got a really nice feeling on the outside, it really, you know, brings out the premiumness in this phone. So, you just take this out, I guess. Uh, and then, we open it. There it is. Now, I got the blue version because, well, I think it's a brilliant colour. And, um, if I just take this out... I've never actually unboxed an Apple phone, so uh, the packaging is a lot different to Samsung. Let's just peel this off, I guess. Back, there's nothing in the back. Okay. Uh, and then that is the phone itself. It really does look beautiful, I have to admit. Even as a Samsung user, I've got to give credit to the design. And then I'm also just gonna pull this off. So this is the charger. It um, it's quite fast. Apple really didn't mention anything about the charger when they were promoting this phone. They talked about the camera, the performance, but they didn't really mention the battery at all, did they? So, I can't wait to see how this actually is. And here we can see we've got an Apple charger on one side, and we've got a USB-C, uh, which is what Samsung phones use, on the other. So if you're Samsung and now you're iOS, um, you will get this, and it should work on your phone. But the problem is, does it come with a plug? And that's the questionable thing, because uh, apparently it doesn't come with a plug, so I'm pretty worried about that. One last look at the phone. I really do like that silver, that silvery platinum look at the back. Like, honestly, I've taken this flagship S20, I've even got a flagship S10 at home, and I've got the iPhone 12. So, of all of them, even though I'm a Samsung user, like I said, I have to say that this is the best looking. Right, now we're going to boot it up. So, well, let's just hope that it does. We've got the little Apple screen, the famous screen going all the way from 1980s. Ooh, hello, a little welcome message. Like I said, I've never really unboxed these phones, so I'm not so sure how they work. Okay guys, so I'm finally back here and all of my photos, contacts, images, uh, videos, everything has been shifted over, especially my apps. And I have to say, it did take quite a long time. I mean, if we compare it to Samsung Smart Switch, which generally takes around 30 to 40 minutes, this is taking more than an hour. So if you are in a huge rush, you just bought the phone and you wanted to come tomorrow for something important, please do keep this in mind because it's not going to immediately boot up with your data. This definitely needs to teach you more about how to use the phone, like how to transfer it with a cable. When you use the Samsung phone, when you start it off, it's like transfer your data without a cable, with a cable. It teaches you all about the phone, the different swipes, movements. I'm a completely new Samsung user. I've never tried out iOS, okay? Let's just say this. And I want to know how to use the phone. I'm not supposed to know. Like, when I booted up the phone, it never told me what swipes are for, never told me what swipe goes where, what these buttons do. I mean, of course there's the volume button, but if I bought my phone for the first time, how am I supposed to know that? And that's something that Apple really needs to focus on, uh, to focus on here. If they want to bring their Samsung users, like me, to the iOS side, they should really try harder and teach us more. They shouldn't just give us stuff, like... First of all, they didn't even include a charger in the box and I'm a completely new Samsung user, or I'm a new user in general, How? What, what am I supposed to do? Tell me. And if you're lucky enough to be an uh, old Apple user, you'll know it, but yeah, that's something they need to improve on. Another thing I am incredibly disappointed about is the battery. They did not talk a single bit on the release of this phone about the battery, and well, that can be quite, confusing. Let's have a look at the battery. 2,800 and milliamps. Compare that to 
uh, Samsung's 4600 milliamp power battery with the phone I'm using to record here. Yes, I have to use a phone because I'm on holiday here. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have all my recording equipment, sadly. But um, if we compare it to the S10 Lite or the S10, 4400 milliamp hours? And that is definitely a lot better. But consider the phone was released one or more than one year ago. Take that into account. And the new iPhone 12 year, which was released just a few days ago, has 2850 milliamp power. And to make things worse, a 20 watt charger. Compare this to OnePlus, Oppo, Huawei, even Samsung 65 watt chargers. That's the usual average day and age. And Samsung, uh, Apple, sorry. I'm not criticizing you, Samsung. Apple's just, uh, it's very clear what's going on here. They want to cut costs. And I can see why. Because of the lockdown, people haven't been buying new stuff. Maybe people are losing jobs. Maybe people get lower salaries. They don't have enough money to buy new phones. So therefore, the Apple market has gone down and demand has, like, dropped at a really fast rate. This means Apple has to cut down on money and cut down on costs and... Here's a classic example of them doing it. A rushed, bad example of their next gen phone. 20 watt charger, 3000 milliamp power battery. Even my old S8, which is like, I don't know, three years old, has a better battery than that. That's pretty concerning, Apple. Right, now let's talk about the pros of this phone. It's 162 grams, which is incredibly easy and light to carry around. If I'm to compare it against well, a phone like this, it's quite heavy, you know? And this is pretty lightweight, so that definitely makes it easier to carry around. It's 7.4 millimeters depth, so this is pretty chunky. Comparing it to the Samsung S8, would you look at that? This is like, I don't know, a few millimeters, and this is 7.4 millimeters. Uh, so look at that. That is a lot of depth. Um, it's got is it a big enough display to watch your favorite content like 4k and it's super retina XDR display the screen size is 2532 pixels by 1170 so again a really good screen so you can watch your 4k content on it it's IP68 waterproof as well so 6 meters for 30 minutes uh, that's how long it can survive and I was talking about their A14 fast bionic chip earlier and that is something you can compare to the best chips in this day because in their previous phones Apple have been trying to cut costs by stopping their Qualcomm series but now I think they're putting a little more effort into making good chipsets for their phones. The camera is again another con. I mean I'm, I'm not that happy with it. Look at Samsung! Their 12 megapixels have existed in my old S8 even in my very old S7. This has 12 megapixels. Compare this to the Samsung's S20 Ultra, or oh, no 20 Ultra, okay? With 108 megapixels. That's groundbreaking, isn't it? And they're working with like 130 megapixel phones. Apple showing off again, saying the camera's so good. 12 megapixels. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Another example of Apple trying to cut costs. So guys, to test out the quality of the iPhone 12 camera and to see what it can handle with 4K and HD, I took a few videos and pictures, selfies and like zooming in and out on the iPhone 12. So I'm just going to play those for you. One thing I did notice is that the Apple website lied. They said that the iPhone 12 can run 4K at 60fps but it can only run 4K at 30 and I could not find a single way to activate it to 60, it just wouldn't allow me. So that is incredibly disappointing, don't trust the Apple website there. Um, and then also, the, the quality wasn't too bad, but I'm not going to spoil it for you, so here we go. This is bad as frame rates can get 24 FPS in 4K, you can't do HD um, 24 FPS because you can't, that's Apple blocking me right there. Again, just a good representation of the iPhone camera. I have to be pretty quiet because this is a hotel, not my house. And this is the 4K selfie camera at 30 FPS. Again, amazing quality but questionable frame rates. 
So guys, unfortunately, like I said before, you cannot record 4K in 60 FPS. The cap is at 30, so this is just some 30 FPS content. I'm gonna run down the uh, the hallway in my hotel. Uh, like I said before, I'm on holiday and I'm uh, tier one coronavirus. That helps. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just walking down. And it's got an ultra wide 12 megapixel camera, which most ultra wide cameras are pretty worse. So that's a pro, I guess. Video stabilization at 720p, 180p, and no, sorry, not 180p, 1080p, and 4K. Imagine what 180p would be like. Ugh. Face ID and on screen fingerprint reader for those of you who like to be secure. It supports 5G, which can do 70 to 80 megabits per second download speed. That's another pro. 20 watt charger. I have to come back to that. Disappointing. But it does have the new iOS 14, which is a better Siri and it's easier to get around. How far has this moved me from iOS, from Samsung to iOS? It's moved me. I've got to say, quite a bit, but it hasn't really moved me that far, because I am one of those guys who always has my phone dead. Let me show you what I mean. Turn on. Turn on. Okay, it's dead. Yes, I am one of those people who are always using their phone, therefore, and I'm carrying my charger and it dies. I know, that's quite disappointing. And this has a 2815 mAh battery. This has like a 3600. And if this runs out so quickly, imagine this. It would be a total nightmare for me. Plus I like to get uh, going really quickly, which means my phone needs to charge like Thanos a snap. And 20 watts, it's not fast enough. But I didn't actually get much time to talk about the design of the phone, so I'm going to do that for a second um, and I'll tell you what I like about the design compared to my S8 which is currently the best design I have on a phone. I've got an S20 and S10 Lite but personally this is my favourite colour on a phone. You can probably see the reflection of my phone. Yes, I'm on a laptop, I'm sorry. That's all I have for this holiday trip. Okay, so I just had to remove this case from the phone. I bought a case because you never know when my little brother could come and snatch the phone and drop it, or I could just be me, my clumsy self. This, uh, it, you've got a ton of ways to drop this phone. Like I said, it's pretty thick, so you could easily just stumble upon it. But if I, when I took off that case, I really have to say, I love the design of the new iPhone 12. The blue look on the phone is just majestic. And now I'm saying something because I've purchased three or four flagship phones here. So to say that I like the iPhone 12 the best out of all of them, that's something, you know? And of course, I've got to point out that shiny, beautiful iPhone logo on the back. So that is what I really like. Now, it's got two cameras over here. The third one is a macro camera, so quite disappointing. Of course, you can't really do much with a macro camera. And you've got a fourth camera at the back. No, that's just a sensor, actually, not a camera. This is also not a camera, this is a sensor. I only just realized that. But, like I said, this is a big, bulky, thick phone. So if you're planning on buying a jeans or a pair of jeans with pockets maybe reconsider for the phone or for the jeans i'd recommend going for the jeans um then again the phone it's a big enough display for you to watch your content but compare it to my s8 over here it's incredibly taller like a lot taller than the iphone 12 and that's something uh so that's pretty much what i have to say about it and I will be doing another video uh, telling you how what I think of the phone after using it for a couple of days. I'll see you later. This has been the Agent Ducky. Goodbye.